Like so many of us here today, I too fell in love at a young age. Or maybe too young, as I was far below legal. She was Chinese, and I met at the age of five, while she was several years older than me. Strange as it may seem, but our relationship was beneficial. While most people only used her at night, I kept her company throughout the day. Although she could not read, write, let her own speak, she introduced me to the art of storytelling, something that has molded me into the person I am today. I'm talking about Susie, my television set. I found myself spending more time with Susie during the dawn of my primary school years when my four older siblings were shipped off to boarding schools. My parents at the time were barely home due to their devotion with work. This led to some solitude with Susie where she would show me different kinds of kids' TV shows. But little did she know, she was subtly teaching me the persuasion of storytelling. Our bond grew close as the days passed by. Each afternoon, I found myself spending time with Susie, following the lives of conjoined brothers, one half being a cat and the other a dog. <laughs> I admired a boy genius who harbored a secret laboratory beneath his bedroom while constantly thwarting his sister's attempts to enter the lab, <laughs> and visited an underwater city whose pride chef was a square yellow sea sponge. <laughs> Their supernatural lives inspired me to create my own cartoons. Soon the backs of my notebooks were strewn with drawings of my own imaginary worlds, cartoon characters who lived the most extraordinary lives, like Drew the Dinosaur, a corporate banker by day, but a ruthless crime-fighting machine by night. Stories that had no words, just moving characters created from a curious young mind. Now, these weren't just cartoons to me. There were lessons imparting me with the fundamentals of storytelling. I began grasping how story arcs worked from watching so many episodes begin and end. I observed SpongeBob SquarePants transition through moods and later on used the facial expressions I picked up from watching him onto my cartoon characters to show how they were feeling. But not only did I learn tidbits about storytelling, I also learned how families are supposed to stick together regardless of the situation they find themselves in from watching Cat Dog. Unfortunately, my obsession with Susie and my comics led to a sudden plunge in my academics. The five-year-old me couldn't balance the two. And as a result, I got in trouble with my teachers regarding the declining grades. As soon as my parents caught wind of the situation, though, Susie took the fall. My dad locked her up in his closet and soon replaced her with private tutors. Like, Lo like Romeo and Juliet, our relationship was also hindered by family. <laughs> but this didn't stop me from practicing what Susie taught me. I kept on crafting adventures in secret with the fear that the world wouldn't accept my drawings. As my high school years came knocking at my door, my parents enrolled me into boarding school, increasing the wedge they already had on me and Susie. I complied with the change and put my visual art interests on hold in order to get my academics back on track. Surprisingly though, at school, I found a new outlet to voice my ideas, cr creative writing. My English classes opened doors that I had overlooked during my childhood. I found myself expressing myself better in the written word and venturing into unfamiliar territories that I couldn't visit with my drawings. The best part about creative writing was I was both good at it and everyone accepted my written expressions. It was during this time when I was heavily leaning towards creative writing that I stumbled upon a very important aspect about storytelling. I learned that stories have the power of influence. A well-written story has the ability to change a person's particular views on a subject or completely alter the perception of the world. For instance, Back in boarding school, we never really had a lot of entertainment around us. And as a result, most of us read books. It was during this time that a couple friends of mine decided to pursue a career in medicine 
after reading Ben Carson's book, Gifted Hands. The story was so compelling that it aided them in deciding what they'll do for the rest of their lives. The story itself. Now the story doesn't necessarily have to take form of a book. It could be the news. It could be a song, a video game, film. They're all driven by stories. They always manage to put ourselves in certain moods whenever we view them. For instance, either leaving us happy after recalling fond memories whenever our favorite song comes on, or leaving us in fear that the world is ending whenever we watch the news these days. I don't know what it is about the news. They always seem to bring us to tragedy first. It's either Ebola or terrorism. They never seem just to come out and say, hey, this individual made a spaceship and soon we'll all be able to fly to the moon. But no, wait, the dead, it was about a crash. I forgot. Um, point being, stories stir up those emotions. Now I'd like to leave you with this. Imagine yourself as a puppet. Now the puppet represents your beliefs, your perceptions of the world, or whatever else you hold dear inside of you. Now the string attached to the puppet is the story. And the person behind the story is the puppeteer. Your fate of your beliefs, your perceptions, lies in the hands of the puppeteer, the storyteller. Thank you very much.